Hello, and welcome to the first of what we hope are going to be a whole series of NBF podcasts about key topics and issues affecting the bed industry. Today, we're delighted to have with us the Sustainable Development Director at Hypnos Beds, Richard Tate, Sorry, Richard. Richard Naylor, uh, who is going to start, who is going to start us off talking about their newly developed sustainable bed and mattress plastic packaging. Welcome, Richard, to our first podcast. Thank you, Jess. Now, could you start by briefly giving us some background information on how and why you came to develop this groundbreaking new packaging? Of course, uh, I think. Um, all of us in the bed industry are, are trying to do the right thing uh, across our different genres of product, in, whether it's foam or natural or, or what have you. And um, one of the things we ignore, not conveniently, we ignore because there hasn't really been a solution to date, is the packaging. We put an enormous plastic bag derived from petrochemicals on our mattresses and on our divans. And is there a better solution for all of us? We've talked about it for, for a long time, as you know, Jess, on the sustainability mm -hmm. committees within the MBF. And it's, it's, it just set me on a, on a personal challenge to see what uh, we could achieve in, in that area. Well, I mean, that's great. Somebody's got to take the lead here. So, so what kind of stumbling drops were there that you had to overcome? Um, well, I think to, price is always one of those things where everybody loves sustainability and uh, um, wants to contribute to climate change in a positive manner, but not if it costs a lot more. So um, one of the challenges is always cost, and we have to look at it within those pillars of sustainability, the social, environmental and economic ones, and see if we can tick all of those boxes with regards to the product. If we can do that, then I think we've got a, a product that certainly for for the, for the here and now gives us gives us options going forwards. So what exactly is the packaging made of and what are its kind of main benefits? Um, good question. So th there's two elements. The, the, this is a, what we would call a green PE. So it uses a uh, what I call a sustainable polymer to create that plastic. And what I mean by that is it's derived from natural sources. And in this case, that polymer is derived from sugarcane. And that sugar cane is primarily used to produce sugar in the first place. And then what's left, the waste material from that process is then, then processed to produce ethanol. And ethanol is one of the key ingredients in creating plastic. Normally, ethanol is, is quite cheaply produced via the petrochemical process. So we're digging carbon out of the ground and we are converting it into various uh, uh, oils and uh, petroleum and other plastic based products. So that's where plastic comes from. And what we're trying to do is create the same chemistry, but from a sustainable source. So that's, that's stage one. The second bit, when we look on the horizon to how the UK want to operate its uh, waste regulations and packaging taxes to say, well, having a green plastic isn't good enough. We also have to have by law, as it comes in, I think April, 2022, uh, a plus 30 percent content of re uh, recycled content within our packaging it's not well it, it, it's not law but if we don't we're going to face some serious packaging taxes as an industry yeah. so yeah. so one of the things we have to do and that's that's relatively available here and now to get a recycled content uh, um, but i wanted to go a step further and see if i could make the remaining content something that is uh, renewable and, and that's what we've achieved so does this packaging have the same sort of characteristics of performance and durability as the store, the, the packaging people currently use, the bags uh, people use? Absolutely. Chemically, it's identical um, because it is, your ethanol is a, is a, is a chemical formula. It's the ethyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol, depending on how you pronounce it. But that, that chemistry is, is exactly the same. It's just deriving it from a, from a different source. So the plastic itself, um, the only thing that if, the impacts the quality of the plastic is adding of recycled content. So you have to make sure that's, that's correct. And in doing so, we've, um, we've achieved a product that actually performs, performs better when we do the, the plastic standards test. So um, formal sort of punch tests to, on the plastic and tear tests on the plastic, it performs very well. And that, that's key to um, all of us bed manufacturers. We want the products that we've labored over and spent time producing for our value customers to, to remain um, intact and clean at the point of delivery. So the, the packaging is very important. What we're doing here is, is sort of providing a packaging that not only does that, but it, um, 
it doesn't damage the environment in the manner that standard packaging does at the same time. So um, this product is, um, is carbon negative at the point that it's delivered to the customer. So what I mean by that is there is so much carbon sequestration uh, realized at the point of growing the sugar cane that it um, offsets pretty much every other process and some within, within, within the, um, um, the cycle. Not only that, because it shares the same chemistry as standard plastic, you don't have to have separate recycling streams. It can be recycled with standard plastic back into the recycled content that then goes back into our bag. So it's got a wonderful circular story as well. So it solves the problem for us, for us now in the industry, I believe. Oh, that's, well, that's good to hear. So, um, so it's obviously sort of ticking quite a lot of boxes on the sustainability sort of platform on, the, yeah. and on forthcoming legislation around recycled content. For the consumer, uh, how will they, if, assuming the bag hasn't been taken away by you sure. know, yourselves or the retailer delivering a new bed, uh, how, would they, how would they get rid of the bag? How would they... It's a, it's a good question. It? So it's, it's early stages. Um, I think, uh, as you know, a lot of the, county, the, the local councils are run by separate contracts and things like that. So there is a communication level that needs to happen. But fortunately, because it's the same plastic as normal plastic and go into the recycle streams that are at those local waste stations and um, be recycled in the, in the normal way. Ideally, what I would like to, to promote is that we can take that bag back as industry, as, uh, uh, as bed manufacturers. And with our manufacturing partner, they will take that bag back, they will clean that bag, they will recycle it and make it back into the recycled content that goes back into the 35%. So completely circular. A little bit of work to do on that yet because it's, uh, it's, it, it, it requires um, logistics and so mm. on and so forth. But we have a very willing partner to do that and we're looking for more like-minded companies to to take this step really so you know yeah. fantastic really um what else can i tell you on, on that side of things um just going back to the cost side it was a challenge because we needed to get volume to create to, to get the projects off the ground because it's very easy to conceptually mm -hmm. make something we've all done that go, in theory this works but yeah. getting it to practicality stages has meant that we've we sort of developed it and then realized it was it was going to be probably too expensive so what do we do we take it to one of our larger retail partners and say and we presented it to that partner across um a number of departments so uh, within their business fashion and other places so you imagine how many garment shrouds for example mm. go into into uh, uh, into a large retailer if they if they if they if they retail those items and so there's there's a hidden sort of uh, uh, underbelly of plastics in lots of businesses and they need solutions for these things as well so by the time you bring this from our little world of mattresses and say look we've got the solution they're going aha i can use that in other areas so it's brilliant it shares it out into yeah. other departments which means the manufacturer gets more scale we get the ability the classic economies and it helps us get that, that price down ultimately um and so that's all we are i mean the price for us at hypnos works very well because um it is it's neutral it, it's costing mm -hmm. us no more other than time effort to, to get the thing off the ground yeah. so yeah. i think that's uh, that's a good thing really is so it's interesting that you've decided not to kind of patent this as your own sort of idea and keep it entirely to yourselves. You've declared that you want to share. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the technology. It, yeah, I think I think it's <laughs> how to put this. I think it would be challenging to get patent on this type of idea anyway for a for a, an ingredient that's out there anyway. And patents, you really have to prove uh, that it's novel. The real challenge is getting it done, knowing how to do it and getting the price down. Um, so yes, we could have gone down that route, route with the, the partners, but I think in, 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 it wouldn't be very sustainable. So you'd get more, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be magnanimous or anything, we'd just get criticized more for keeping it for us, wouldn't we, quite truly? And we, we wouldn't want to, what's the point? What the, the brilliant thing is to do is create inertia and we can, we can or I can say, look, I, was, I, was, I, I helped do that. That, that's that's a nice thing for, for me to yeah. say to myself you know that's that's something I can look back and go yeah I'm proud we did that so no it, and as a business it's good to sort of help um, um, get these things off the ground 
look, in some of our bad technologies and what we do, of course we want those sort of principles, um, if, if they're exciting and we want those uniquely, but a plastic bag, no. <laughs> and I presume the more people who sort of pile in and adopt this technology, they'll be, yeah. the prices well, will become more competitive and this is more and suppliers think, could get involved as well. Yeah, and so. I think it'd be a great thing for us as the MBF to sort of, sort of do a carbon calculator as we do these things. As more companies adopt it, we can say as an industry, yeah. We've just hit the 1,000 ton mark or what have you because these, these companies have, have adopted this type of plastic. So it does yeah. mean, you look, every plastic bag, and we produce a lot as an industry. I don't have the number off the top of my head, um, um, Jess, but there's a lot of beds that get made every week in this country and each of them come in a big plastic bag that, yeah. that needs a solution to. So yeah. I think, um, look... You're right, um, it's not far off 150, 200,000 yeah. mattresses in some, yeah, it's, it's, a week. It's, it's, if yeah. you like, it's yeah. a bit of a dirty problem. And, and mm. now look, the key is um, with all plastics, whether it's this plastic or any plastic, is the custody of it. The cust take, take custody of it, the custodianship of that, that bag. How do we own it and how do we make sure it doesn't go into landfill? And that, you know, plastic isn't necessarily evil if we, if we look after it. We've dug it out of the ground. It, it, it's now an asset. What do we do with it and how do we keep it working? So we're doing that with the recycled content within in the bag. And it's just that we've adopted this uh, carbon neutral approach or carbon negative approach with the remaining content, which is the other 65%. Mm. Um, yeah. Sound, sounds great. So what, what, what are the next steps for, for you um, as a company? Uh, and where would you like... <laughs> You well, know, I think, I think in terms of, I don't think anybody would want to come and talk to Hypnos, particularly about getting their packaging, and, and neither would we like to deal with that. <laughs> no, probably I not. Think, um, <laughs> I think, in fairness, if, if we could use this um, uh, first podcast to invite people to contact the MBF and say, and raise a hand, say, we're interested in that, and then we can put them in touch with the manufacturers, and then they can, they can make their own path and developments. What I would say is that we've developed bags, absolutely no problem at all for our Princess Risborough site and our other site uses um, the typically a Morello wrapper and so uh, and we've developed the same film for the wrapper as well which works perfectly well in the same right, environment yeah. so, so we can cover what most people in the industry do whether it's a heat sealed wrapper or whether it's a, uh, a bag so it's, those bases have been done and again we've got the kilo price right for the wrappers as well. So that should, that should be in favor for everybody, depending if they use the same weights that Hypnos use. That's, that's why they need to go and talk to the manufacturers themselves right. as to that. But it's, it's in the right ballpark, it really is. Well, I think that sounds very exciting because, you know, we've, uh, uh, we've been talking for a while about the problem of plastic yeah. bags and, and packaging and how to kind of make it more uh, yeah. environmentally friendly without using the necessary performance. So obviously yeah. what, what Hypnos and have done <laughs> and you have done, Richard, but, around this area is very exciting. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it came from an idea of walking into Ikea and, and uh, they, they do a green PE sandwich bag that they sell <laughs> and i thought i thought how do you make that bigger <laughs> all so, great ideas are triggered <laughs> by some trivial incident you know newton yes. and the apple and all of that so no that uh, really delighted that um you've been able to share that uh, experience with oh, us today yeah. richard and yes everybody out there if you're interested in finding more about uh, the cane sugar plastic bags for your mattresses do please drop me a line at the National Bed Federation at jessica at bedfed.org.uk and we will indeed put you in touch with uh, the producers and hopefully we'll see an awful lot more of these new plastic bags on the market before too long. Thank you very much for joining us today.